Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to the Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at adding some wireless buttons to our smart home in the form of these Acara buttons. I've got three different buttons here and we'll take a look at the pros and cons of each and how to set them up in Home Assistant using our Zigbee USB stick and ZHA. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there's some affiliate links to some of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past and other ways that you can support the channel like signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link or supporting the channel directly through my buy me a coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. Since starting my smart home journey, I've put a lot of focus on using motion sensors to trigger my lights and lack of motion in areas to trigger the lights to then turn off. But having lived like that for some time now, I've discovered that that's not always the right solution. For example, in our lounge room and our dining room, we don't always want the lights to come on when we enter those spaces or move around in those spaces. Especially if we're only grabbing something quickly from that room, trying to enjoy a movie, or chasing the cat. Other rooms in the house don't really warrant a motion sensor either. The laundry probably doesn't need a smart light at all, though there's certainly times when you might have your hands full, so being able to ask a digital assistant to turn the lights on is certainly helpful. Bathrooms and water closets probably don't need motion activated lights, but it's certainly a nice to have. And I definitely don't want the hallway lights coming on every time we walk up and down the hall or the cat gets the zoomies at three o'clock in the morning. In these circumstances where motion sensors might not make sense, it would be nice to still use a smart light with a regular light switch or even a button. Ideally using the existing light switch would be even better, but that is actually a topic for an upcoming video. So to solve this problem, I've ordered some buttons and switches from AliExpress. Affiliate links in the description and I picked up three different Akara buttons. I got multiples of each. Uh, I grabbed uh, two of these single button Akara D1 buttons, and these are a large paddle style button. Uh, I got two of uh, these dual switch Akara D1 uh, paddle style buttons. Uh, and I also got eight of the single doorbell style Akara mini switch uh, buttons as well. The reason I chose the Akara buttons is because these are all Zigbee buttons. So they're going to be nice and easy for me to pair them to Home Assistant using my Zigbee USB stick that we've reviewed in the past and ZHA. I have also noticed on the back of uh, the D1 boxes that there's a works with Magia logo here. Uh, and that means that theoretically I could pair these and add them to my existing Xiaomi ecosystem as well. Now it might seem strange to be adding switches and buttons back into a smart home with well-established motion detection, but these buttons and switches can be used to trigger any number of things in the smart home, not just turning lights on and off. And they're also great for guests who mightn't necessarily be used to smart homes. Just about everybody understands the concept of a light switch or a button straight away. But your guests, and to some degree even other family members, like young kids for example, can't be expected to know the right command to get Alexa or Google Home to do the right thing. Introducing these buttons would also be great for situations where accessibility is required. I know that a lot of older houses in Australia have their light switches uh, mounted at around chest height and quite often on the architrave around the door. And Australian light switches are quite small, only around about 15 by 15 millimetres. And this might be challenging for someone with mobility issues who either can't reach the height of the light switch 
or might struggle to trigger a regular light switch because of tremors or other mobility issues, preventing them from getting to that small target. And this is where smart switches like these are going to come in, especially these D ones where they are big paddle style switches and they're going to be perfect in a case where there's limited mobility and because they're wireless you can definitely mount these wherever you need them this might be useful if you've got young kids to mount the light switches at a more kid friendly height to promote some independence for them and it's even useful in our home despite all our light switches being wall mounted and at a reasonably kid friendly height our water closet has the light switch on the opposite wall as you walk in because there's cavity sliding doors or pocket sliders for my North American viewers behind the two walls where you'd normally expect a light switch to be. Before we added motion sensor lights to that water closet, it caused a lot of confusion for our guests who would look around for a good minute to find the light switch. The water closet not having any natural sources of light in there as well didn't do anything to help. All of these buttons and switches can be mounted with the included double-sided tape wherever you need them. So if you need to move a light switch, it doesn't have to be expensive. You don't need to get an electrician to wire them in because they're wireless. And if you use something like 3M command strips, they don't even need to be permanent. So that makes them a great solution for renters who might want to install smart bulbs and don't want to damage the walls or get an electrician in to wire in special switches. So let's take a closer look at the switches themselves. Now, being that they are Akara switches, all of the writing on the box is Chinese. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. I will just on the back uh, of the D1 boxes and on the bottom of the mini switch boxes point out uh, that we are looking at uh, Zigbee, Zigbee and Zigbee uh, and it also mentions the uh, a couple of other details there if you can sort those out. Google Translate should be able to translate the box if you are interested in seeing what they say, uh, but to be perfectly honest, I'm not. I'm just going to get them out of the box so that we can take a look. Before we do that though, from the 11th to the 13th of March 2023, I'll be at the Train and Hobby Show at Sandown Racecourse and Entertainment Centre in Melbourne Southeast. The Train and Hobby Show showcases the best hobbies in Australia from model railways, ham radio and electronics, radio controlled models, makers and arts and crafts. And this year for the very first time, the Train and Hobby Show is adding computing and home automation into the mix. I'll be at the Train and Hobby Show for all three days and I'll have demos of gadgets like light bulbs, smart switches and even some of these buttons. We'll have some basic automations set up to showcase some simple automations that you can do in your home. And uh, I'll be giving away these Hive Mind automation stickers at the Train and Hobby Show. I'll have some Raspberry Pis and I'll also be showing off my Grafana dashboard for energy and environmental monitoring that I already have in place here. So if you're in Melbourne from the 11th to the 13th of March, 2023, Come on down to Sandown Racecourse and say hello. Get your tickets today at trainandhobbyshow.com.au. That's T-R-A-I-N-A-N-D-H-O-B-B-Y-S-H-O-W.com.au. Okay, so with each of these switches out of the box, you'll see we've got the dual paddle here, the single paddle here, and this is the Akara Mini Switch. Now for both the paddle switches, we've got this um, decent chunk of double stick tape here that you can use to fix it to the wall. Uh, and they also come with a couple of uh, little screws there. Uh, and both of those have that uh, versus the uh, mini switch, which already has uh, a ring of double stick tape on the back of it. Uh, and it comes with a spare ring of double stick tape there. There's really not a whole lot to say about them, 
they're really just switches. Uh, the D1 switches have these nice big paddle buttons. Uh, and as I mentioned before, these are definitely going to be good for the uh, those kinds of mobility issues that I mentioned before, being a much bigger target. Uh, if we look around the unit, there's not a whole lot. What we can see if we take a close look at uh, the D1 is we've got these two tabs on the bottom edge. Uh, and if we just get a flat bladed screwdriver under there and give it a little twist, uh, we can actually pop the whole front mechanism off the switch. And we've got uh, the actual board here. Uh, and there's a CR2032 button cell battery in there. Uh, and you can just make out the two buttons uh, and looks like uh, the suggestion here with the screws would be to drill out uh, through there. Uh, if we wanted to, we could also uh, get in underneath this plastic cover to take a closer look at the board. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we'll see that each of the switches has this nice spring-loaded mechanism here uh, and it works pretty well. So I'll put that back together. Uh, and uh, if we take a closer look at the mini button, uh, it's just this kind of doorbell style button uh, and there's a pairing button on the top edge there. Not sure if you can make that out. Uh, on the back to uh, expose the battery, there's a little slot here and an Australian 10 cent piece. Uh, an Ameri a US quarter would probably do the same thing, uh, but we can get that in there give it a little twist it's like a very tiny twist uh, not even an eighth of a turn uh, and if we uh, pop that out we see the CR2032 button cell in there uh, it's worth mentioning with uh, these uh, when they are, are stuck to the wall you could very reasonably just put a little uh, pressure on the unit and then give it a slight twist uh, and it should come off. I do that with our um, temperature and humidity sensors around the house here. Uh, so now that we've got them back together, uh, there's really not a whole lot to say about them. Uh, they're switches. Uh, I will, I do note that the D1s do not have a pairing button uh, as opposed to the mini bu mini switch does have a pairing button, uh, but that's okay because I've already figured out how to get these into pairing mode. So now that we've taken a look at the units themselves, let's see how to pair them with Home Assistant. I've got my demo instance of Home Assistant here. And this is the one that has the Zigbee USB stick plugged into it. So I'll go to settings and I'll go to devices and services and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm looking for this Zigbee home automation section in the bottom right, the Hub Z smart home controller. I'm going to click on three devices here and you'll see we've got a couple of IKEA remotes here and there's the Zigbee coordinator which is the USB stick itself uh, and I'm just going to click add device and so now that we've done that it's searching for zigbee devices so i'm on the mini switch i'm going to press and hold the uh, pairing button until we see a blue flashing light on the front of the unit uh, and so that should be in pairing mode for the d1 single switch paddle i'm just going to press and hold the button down uh, and in a moment we should see that flash and i'll do the same for the uh D1 double paddle and I'll just press and hold that down. Uh, so while I'm holding those buttons, in a moment we should actually start to see these get picked up by ZHA. So we've got one that has been picked up. I'm not sure which one. Okay. So we've got one Lumi remote. I'm just going to set that to going to add new area and go test we'll just create a test area and i'll add that there we've got these other two that are starting the interview so i think uh the one that we've got in green is the mini remote we will find out uh, mini switch thinking about it i probably should have uh, been a bit more careful about uh, how i paired these Okay, so we've got all three showing us that the device is ready to use uh, and I'm not 100% sure which one is which. So let's see if we can identify them based on the markings on the back. Uh, so what I will do is I'll put these all into the test area uh, and I will 
see if triggering a button gives me any kind of indication. So I'm pretty sure now, uh, now that I see what's going on here, I'm pretty sure this is the mini switch uh, because it does not have the temperature uh, or the identify button there. Uh, this uh, is going to be D1 paddle. Uh, and if I click the identify, uh, let's press that and see if any of the lights are flashing. So none of the lights are flashing when I press that. Uh, so I'm not too sure whether that's the double or the single. Um, I'll put this as D1 paddle two. I probably should have figured out which one was which before doing this, uh, but that's okay. I can work with that. So now that we've got these added into Home Assistant, I can back out here and we see we've got D1 paddle, D1 paddle two, and mini switch. Now, if I go into D1 paddle two, for example, we've got the battery, unknown device temperature is currently unknown, but that will update shortly. Uh, we've got the identifier, which for whatever reason, pressing the button uh, doesn't actually make the lights flash, which is a little disappointing, but that's okay. So what I can do now is I can press the button uh, and we will see, so if I press this one, okay, so now we see we've got button one event was fired, button two event was fired. Uh, so the double switch is D1 paddle two, which works out quite well. Uh, and the single switch is going to just be D1 paddle and the mini switch is, uh, I would say the mini switch. So let's go and double check that the mini switch is what I think it is. I will press that button and we see mini switch remote button short press event was fired. Uh, again, we've got two hidden entities there. We can activate them if we wanted to do some diagnostic troubleshooting. That just shows us the strength of our uh, Zigbee network connection. So now with all three buttons paired to ZHA, we can now set them up to trigger some different things. I'm going to focus on the dual toggle and I'm going to get it to do a few different things. Just to prove the point here, we'll turn on and off some lights here in the dining room uh, and we'll see if we can get it to trigger some other things here as well. Now it's worth mentioning with these buttons, if I drill into D1 paddle two, there's a couple of different triggers that you can use when you create an automation. See if I click on automations here, it's going to create an automation with device, do something when, and we've got 13 options. So if I click at, to expand that, we've got either device offline, so that's a trigger event, first button double clicked, first button pressed, first button continuously pressed. Then we've got second button double clicked, second button pressed, and second button continuously pressed. And lastly, we've got both buttons double clicked, both buttons pressed, and both buttons continuously pressed. So just with button presses here, we've got on this dual paddle model, we've got nine different options of triggers that we can use here. We'll just go first button pressed, and I'll add an action to this. We'll call the service and I'll go light.toggle, uh, and the target is I'll go dining room lights and I'm going to save that and we'll just call this save on that. So with that automation saved, if I single click the paddle now on number one, the dining room lights have turned off and you might be able to see that it's a bit darker on my A camera there. And if I tap that again, it turns back on. Now in some testing, I definitely noticed that these buttons are far more responsive than the one that I've got at the front door. So I might be swapping the one at the front door out for uh, possibly the mini switch here. Um, so we're able to turn those lights on and off uh, with that uh, and uh, even just a very brief tap is enough 
for it to trigger. So I'm going to tap and release as quickly as I possibly can. And it has triggered and it's turned the lights back on. So that's great. So we'll back out there uh, and I'm going to uh, close that. I'll click plus again on there and show 13 more. First button double clicked and I'll add an action. I'll call a service. I'm going to go light.toggle again. And this time I'm going to choose WLED bar. So the LED strip behind me here. Uh, and I will tap save. So I will save that. And so first button double clicked, toggle WLED bar. So now double click and the WLED behind me has turned off on the A camera there and double click again and it's turned back on. Lastly, I'll add one more automation, show 13 more. And this time I will go uh, both buttons continuously pressed and I'll add an action and I will call a service. So I'll go light.toggle uh, and I'll see if I can uh, trigger this Mirabella Genio bulb behind me using a double, uh, a long press on both. So let's, we'll save that and I will long press and it has triggered and the Mirabella Genio bulb behind me is now on and I can do the same thing again uh, and it is off. So the long press is holding for more than about a second. Now I'm curious to see with the mini switch if it has the same responsiveness. So I'm going to back out of the D1 paddle uh, and I'm going to go to the mini switch here. I'm going to configure an automation and we'll see we've got six options here, uh, which is remote button double press. Uh, so if we double click, uh, there's a short press, there's a long press, and there's a long release uh, after a long press. So I'm not sure what that means, uh, or if the uh, battery level changes, or, or if the device goes offline. Uh, I'm just going to go for short press button pressed, uh, and I'm going to go to actions, a call a service, and I'm going to just go light.toggle. Again, really, really basic, choosing an entity, and I'm going to grab uh, the dining room lights. Again, uh, I'm not going to use this in production like this, but uh, it's just for the purposes of a demonstration. I'm going to save that. I'm going to call this mini switch. So we'll save that. Uh, and so now we've got the mini switch here. I'm going to press and it has triggered. And that was a very momentary press there as well. So uh, the great news here is that this button appears to be a whole lot more responsive than the one that I have at the front door. So I think this is going to be my new doorbell button. So that is adding some physical controls to your smart home using these Acara Zigbee buttons. I'm definitely looking forward to deploying these around the house to control lights, fans, and with some nuanced controls, even triggering different scenes and functions. I might even end up swapping out my existing doorbell button, as I mentioned, because this new mini switch seems to react a whole lot better than the one that I have in place that is paired using the Xiaomi hub. It's worth mentioning that it's entirely possible that like the previously reviewed Acara FP1 presence sensor, there might be some additional features enabled if we were pairing these with the native Acara hub and app. But that's not how I intend to use these buttons. Of course, if you're looking to add wireless buttons to your smart home, you don't need to specifically get these ones. These just happen to be my personal preference. I obviously chose Zigbee because of the ease of integration into my smart home, and I wasn't able to find any thread-enabled buttons, and Z-Wave is not something that I have used in my smart home at all, and 433 MHz seems like a lot of work. If and when I do find some thread buttons, I'll definitely be sure to get some review units in, and if you're interested in seeing those, let me know in the comments below. That's all we have for this video, and I do hope that it helped you in your smart home journey.
Be sure to comment down below with your home automation ideas that you'd like to see me cover in a future video and how you might use your smart switches around your house. Don't forget to follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release new videos each week. And lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Any contributions that you make through Buy Me A Coffee are put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.